should preface something before we begin. This entire video is going to sound like slander, but it's not. It's just the truth about how being a Starbucks barista is drastically different from being a barista at a smaller chain or non-chain coffee shop. You guys already know this about me. I was a barista for almost five years. About three and a half of those were spent as a Starbucks barista, and my final year of being a barista was spent working at a local coffee shop here in downtown Chicago. And let me tell you guys something. It is night and day. That difference is stark. There are not a whole lot of things in life that are black and white, but working as a Starbucks barista compared to working at a local coffee shop, my first day at my Chicago cafe was very different from my first day at Starbucks. When you first arrive at Starbucks for training, you get this vibe of like, hurry up and learn this shit so we can throw you to the wolves, which fair and emphasis on wolves. At my Chicago cafe, my first day was spent, and I'm not even kidding you, unlearning everything I learned at Starbucks. My manager at that cafe was an ex-Starbucks barista as well, an ex roastery barista, like the gigantic Chicago roastery over on Michigan Avenue that's the largest in the world. Yeah, he was a manager over there and he left because he was about to pull his hair out. Actually, he was bald. Maybe he actually did pull his hair out. Maybe that's why he was bald. But he hired me because in my interview, I obviously mentioned that I had Starbucks barista experience and we kind of bonded over, you know, some things that Starbucks baristas tend to experience. If you know, then you know. Point being, he knew I was an ex-partner coming in. So we spent the entire morning, starting at 5 a.m., in an intensive, unlearn everything you've ever learned at Starbucks sort of training session. At Starbucks, you learn pretty quickly that the name of the game is urgency. So that is getting the store prepped and ready for the first customer in the morning as quick as humanly possible, as well as get customers in and out the door as quick as humanly possible. When we arrived for our opening morning shifts at my Chicago cafe, the first thing that anybody on my crew would go and do before anything else was go and calibrate the espresso machine. Straight to dosing and getting it perfect. Sometimes there would be multiple rounds of grind, pull, measure, and until you got it perfect and until you got it right, that's just what we did. After 25 seconds of the espresso machine pulling the espresso shot, if it did not measure out to two ounces perfectly and exactly, start over. That's how important quality was to my local cafe, not necessarily output. At Starbucks, I could honestly count on one hand the amount of times I witnessed somebody attempting to calibrate the espresso machine, and even when people would try to do it and make it right, they didn't know how because a lot of us weren't really trained on that. A quick little guide for espresso, the espresso grind is so fine that it'll feel almost like powdered sugar in between your fingertips. And you want it perfect because you don't want your espresso shot to be over extracted or under extracted. You're either they're gonna end up with a very watery flavor or a bitter flavor and espresso is not supposed to be either of those things. Espresso can be very finicky, which is why a lot of people say that they don't like the taste of Starbucks espresso. The thing is though, is that it really has nothing to do with the flavor of the roast or the bean itself that Starbucks carries. Really, it's from the espresso machine not being properly calibrated and that's why you're ending up with an over-extracted or under-extracted shot of espresso, which doesn't taste very good. In addition to that, there is a lack of quality oversight because of the emphasis on urgency. Slow and steady wins the race, especially when it comes to espresso, but Starbucks is not about that slow and steady wins the race life. They are fast and unsteady doesn't which makes the most money. I don't actually have no idea what they're thinking with that. Which leads me to my next point, lack of training overall. I personally lucked out at my second cafe because I had a micromanager who was super passionate about training and standards. Other baristas that I know that worked at other Starbucks locations, they weren't as lucky and they didn't get the intensive training that I received at my second cafe. It's funny, if you were to ask a group of baristas the same question and they all worked at different cafes, you most likely would receive a different answer from each and every one of them because there's not much standardization standard standard standardization in the past when i have uploaded caramel macchiato at home recipes on youtube tiktok or instagram i'll get some starbucks baristas in the comments being like wait a minute i was trained differently than that when it comes to caramel drizzle i was trained as four four and then two around. I guess there are baristas out there that were trained something completely different. There isn't much standard training across the board and whoever is training the barista, they're 
teaching them and training them on what they know and what they have been taught, which may not be accurate or correct. That's why when I arrived for my first day at my Chicago cafe, my manager had me unlearn everything that I had learned at Starbucks. Realistically, if him and I had compared what we were trained on, it may have been apples to oranges. The first two weeks at that cafe, I was trained on everything. And if I went up to any of the seasoned baristas or baristas that had been there for a while and asked them all the same question, they would have all answered it the same exact way because our training was consistent across the board. When you train your baristas and your employees consistently, it's going to result in consistent output. That's why a lot of people knock Dunkin' Donuts, right? Because you go to any Dunkin' location and you're gonna end up with some iced coffee or something that's different from the other location. There isn't much consistency there. At my Chicago cafe, somebody coming in for their morning cuppa is getting the same cuppa every morning, whether it's me making it or Joe Schmo. Joe Schmo, the barista. I learned so much about coffee and espresso during those initial weeks at my Chicago cafe, more than I had learned in almost four years at Starbucks. So that should tell you everything you need to know right there. When people say that Starbucks is like the McDonald's of coffee, They're not lying, honey. That's none of my business. Lack of preparation is the next one that comes to mind. My Chicago cafe closed at 4 p.m. every day, Monday through Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The afternoon slash closing crew would set up for the morning crew, and the morning crew would set up for the afternoon crew. Despite being busy as hell, I mean, we were smack dab in the middle of River North in downtown Chicago. So despite being crazy busy, we still were able to manage to do that for each other and to set the next crew up for success. One thing I noticed pretty frequently at Starbucks, and again, this is not a knock on any barista, but there was lack of preparation and lack of setting the next crew up for success. Afternoon crew at Starbucks would come in and have to clean up the morning crew's mess and so on and so forth. And because the closing crew would always get the end of the stick, they would be drowning and cleaning and tasks and probably wouldn't get to setting up for the morning crew. Now we could sit here and point fingers on morning crew is to blame. No, closing crew is to blame, but really Really what it comes down to is lack of time and lack of preparation. When you expect your baristas to serve people up into the literal last second and sometimes even past that, you expect that out of your baristas but then turn around and only give them 30 minutes max to close down or open up the store. Not only is that not enough time to clean up and get everything ready to go, but it's also definitely not enough time to prep for the crew that's coming in after you. And then it's sort of like a domino effect because the cycle continues the next day and so on and so forth. Listen here, you heard this here first. One day, when I am president, the first thing that I'm doing is giving Starbucks baristas more than 30 minutes to open up the cafe and more than 30 minutes to close down the cafe. They deserve that. The second thing I'm doing as president is abolishing all unnecessary and absurd DoorDash fees. Vote for me. Setting your crew up for success, that's how cafes flourish. Enough said. Moving on. Lack of cleaning standards. Now, am I sitting here saying that Starbucks is dirty? No, I'm not. What I am saying though, is that I do believe in something that I like to call organization overload. What I mean by that is sometimes some companies, they try to be so overly organized that they tend to overcomplicate very simple things and simple tasks. When you overcomplicate something, something that is so simple, a lot of people will look at that and go, hmm, maybe not. I'm not gonna do that. Starbucks has something called clean play and basically what clean play is is it's a bunch of cards that have deep cleaning tasks on the front and back of them and unless somebody inside the cafe is actively enforcing them they usually get forgotten about because well one nobody wants to do that and two the placement of clean play cards is like behind the back room door which they, it just gets forgotten about and it's overcomplicating something very simple. At my Chicago cafe somebody would be like hey guys we have clean the drains in like 48 hours and then somebody else would be like oh no problem I got it and then boom that cafe was truly spotless because the cleaning tasks were very simple and straightforward we all knew what needed to get done and we worked as a team to get it done together now at Starbucks <laughs> I saw some things coming out of drains that should not have been there. And no, before you freak out, it's not affecting your coffee whatsoever. The only thing that's realistically affecting your coffee is the untrained barista trying to pull espresso shots on a coarse grind. 
that's all. Last two, inconsistent scheduling is my next one. For a year straight at my Chicago cafe, my schedule did not change once. I always knew that I was an opening shift on Tuesdays, I was a closing shift on Thursdays, and I never worked weekends. I worked Monday through Friday, and that was it. I was always with the same crew, and I was always with the same opener on Tuesday mornings. I always knew what to expect, I knew when to go to bed, and I knew how to structure my personal schedule to accommodate my work schedule. I always knew where I stood. Now at Starbucks, I was all over the place for almost four years, which really disrupted my sleep schedule. Some days I would open, next day I would close. Some days I'd be going to bed at 8 p.m. for my opening shift, other days I'd be going to bed at 2 a.m. because I just got off work a couple hours before that. The thing is, I wish Starbucks managers would hire off of availability versus experience. Now, I realize that experience is obviously very important in the hiring process, but so is availability. And more often than not, I saw a lot of my Starbucks managers hiring people that they just liked the look of their experience without actually checking in and seeing if their availability aligned with the store's need for availability. For the longest time, we needed more closers. We needed more people to work in the evening and I watched my manager continuously hire people that only had morning availability. Now I get that these people were like great baristas, they were coming from other Starbucks cafes, that's great, but now you have 20 people on deck for the morning and the same five people in the evening. And because of that, other baristas, such as myself, that are kind of floaters that don't really have that consistent schedule, we're kind of all over the place. We're trying to fit in where the cafe needs us versus our managers just hiring people for the correct time of day that we need people for. Does that make sense? If you enjoy consistency, especially as it pertains to your work schedule, then Starbucks may not be for you. Find a local cafe instead. And again, this isn't slander. This is just, this is just my truth. This is just my experience. Last but certainly not least on how Starbucks cafes are different from local cafes, the time in which the cafe closes. Now that I've lived in the city of Chicago for coming up to three years, I have noticed that a lot of mom and pop local cafes or smaller chain cafes around here they close anywhere from like 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Starbucks, she's open till like 10, 11, midnight in some areas. Those closing shifts are typically 2 to 10.30 and they chew up your entire day and your entire evening. When I worked at my local cafe, my closing shifts would be 10 to 4 or 11 to 4. I still had my entire evening after that, after I got off work, or I at least had a few hours to myself before having to go to bed early and get up for my morning shift, my opening shift the next day. And I really wish Starbucks would adapt to that. I really wish that they would follow that because usually we start running out of like pastries and breakfast items around 5 p.m. and then you get those 8 p.m.ers that come in and they get really pissed off when they find out a bacon gouda breakfast sandwich is sold out at eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night, and then it's a whole thing, it's a whole hoopla, and we could just avoid that by closing the doors, you know, earlier than midnight. I appreciate a coffee shop that closes early, and in my own personal experience, the earlier the shop closes, the better coffee you're gonna get. And those are the reasons that Starbucks and being a Starbucks barista is very different from working at a local cafe and being a barista at more of a mom and pop coffee shop. Mom and pop coffee shop, that rhymes. Again, am I hating on Starbucks? No. Am I trying to deter you from applying or working there? No. Also, last little tidbit, just because I just thought of it, Local cafes will allow you more often than not to accept tips directly, whereas at Starbucks, you might get fired for that. With tips at my Chicago cafe, I was averaging anywhere from like 24 to 28 an hour, which was awesome. Just keep that one in mind too. Just a little, little sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay, I'm done now. Those are the differences. Be nice to your baristas, subscribe to me, and I will see you guys next time. Good luck out there. Cheers.